at the Kingdome. Ken Griffey Jr. against Jack Morris, and this one will poke a hole in the ozone layer. It's way out for a three-run homer, and the Blue Jays up, or the Blue Jays trailing four to one to Seattle. Bottom of the third, Rich Amaral with a shot that Joe Carter can't come down with. It's a double, three hits for Amaral. Carter later left the game injured. Randy Johnson went eighth, a high fastball, 14 strikeouts. He gets the win as the Blue Jays are on the losing end of the opener, eight to one the final, 50. The Blue Jays pitcher Al Leiter like royalty, you see, because Leiter blew it by Buner. He allowed only two hits over seven innings, and that's the sight you will see often, Lou scratching his head. Eighth inning, two outs, no score. Roberto Alomar gets to Chris Bazio. The double, good enough to score Devon White all the way from first. Toronto holds on to win this one and shut out the Mariners. 2-0. Tough loss for Basio. He gave up just four hits over eight innings. The story is... Again, first inning, Kenny Lofton, base knot. Next batter is Thomas Howard, base knot. Next batter, Carlos Baerga. That's a big base knock. Three-run homer. Three batters up, three batters in. Three-nothing Indians. Second inning, it's Howard again. Brings in a pair. He went four for five with three RBIs. No longer Jack in the box. Jack knocked out of it. Six earned runs allowed in the Tribe. They pick up the victory 10 to 6. Bayerga, who went three for five, said, we're going to score some runs no matter who's pitching. Wasn't laughing yet. Rich DeLucia in relief facing Paul Molitor. Two on for Molly, and Molitor comes through with a big blast, and it put the Blue Jays within just one of the M's. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Ed Sprague against DeLucia and hits one down the line. Good enough to bring Darren Jackson home. Bullpen failures once again. The story for the M's, we're tied at nine. Lou Pinella not loving his job at the moment, but the M's took care of things. Top of the 10th, Amaral facing Mike Timlin. And Amaral, the 31-year-old rookie, gets the job done, driving in Henry Cotto with the game winner, 10-9. Mariners, two hits, two RBIs each for Rich Amaral and Jay Buhner. Tino Martinez didn't get a hit or an RBI, but he did walk. Five for the tribe, they lead it five nothing. Jeff Mutis pitching against Ed Spray. Glenn Allen Hill back is mine. No, it's not. Scored a double. At this point, the score is six-three. So Glenn Allen Hill couldn't come up with that one as Tom Kramer in Mutis out. And he's not going to come up with this blooper from Sprague. Next time up, down the line, two-run score. It's six to five, Cleveland. Jays have two on, two out in the ninth. Lilliquist on the mound. Olerud with the pop-up. This a tough play. A potential Texas leaguer. But look at Carlos Baerga. War saves the game right there. So the Indians hung a five spot in the first and had to hang on. And Jeff Mutis, one of the three first-round picks of the Indians, the wraparound. And Albert Bell, a shot to left center. He has a 12-game hitting streak. That's a career high. Kenny Lofton scores and up early are the Indians, but not for long. One for 19, Turner Ward breaks out of a slump with a homer. The Jays take a 5-1 lead. Then in the seventh, Robbie Alomar, who came in hitting 222, hits his first homer of the year off of Mike Bielecki, who was pounded in this game. A lot of numbers up there for the Blue Jays, and it ends up being a 7-1 final number after two poor starts. Good effort for Guzman. Seven strong innings, first win of the year. Mark Gubiza of Casey, look at the unbelievably inflated ERAs. In the early going, two on, Royals down 4-2. Chris Quinn, the pop, Louis Soho took his eye off, and it drops. Brian McRae scores, the Royals are down 4-3. They tie it later in the inning. Soho does get redemption, though, in the sixth. 4-4 tie broken with this opposite field hit scoring Pat Borders. Bottom of the ninth now. Game tied at five. Mike Timlin on through the numbers. McReynolds the shot to short. Soho prevents it from going to the outfield. But Greg Gagne doesn't break stride. Hustles home. Beats the high throw. And then the late tag by Borders. And Kansas City wins 6-5. Mars' is ERA down to 13.24. Gubas is 9.75. Jays have lost three of four. Keith Miller back off the disabled list. Mike Sox back at Sky Dome. And Alex Fernandez has been pitching some sparkling base. Baseball. Here in the second, facing John Olrood and getting the whiff. Yeah. Darren Jackson wants a piece, but doesn't. He gets the whiff as well. Nine Ks into the eighth. Fernandez made one mistake. Gone. Darren Jackson leaves the yard in a hurry, and there's your game winner. The Blue Jays pick up the victory one to nothing.
Jackson says, I never get any fastballs coming over to the American League after playing with the Padres. At the Sky Dome. I won't call it just Sky Dome. After an 0-3 start, Jack Morris surprised some guys tonight, striking out Jose Canseco, who didn't like the call on the outside corner there. Then facing Yvonne Rodriguez on the inside corner, and you can't believe it. Morris gets Doug Strange to wave at that one, but in the sixth inning, Juan Gonzalez breaks a 10-game homer drought. Number six on the year, opposite field shot against Morris. He would leave in the sixth, but the Blue Jays' offense for once took care of him. Joe Carter hammers this one out, a two-run shot. The Blue Jays win at 8-6. Roberto Alomar had four hits. The Jays had a season-high 16. The much-needed first win for Morris. Matt Kaminsky, the Blue Jays, and the White Sox, and Wilson Alvarez. Getting excellent defensive support. Pat Ford is looking at Joey Cora. That's why he's starting. Guns him down, scoreless, through four. Jack Morris having an awful year. Control problems. Walking. Dan Pasqua, a single and a walk, loaded the bases after this. And then Joey Cora up there. Is this going to be fair or foul? Well, let's watch. We can clearly see that it hits the chalk. And Karkovice is in, 2 0 White Sox. Still in the fifth. Lance Johnson to Alomar, and the throw gets away, and it's 3 to nothing Chicago. Another run is in. They make it 5-1 to one in the sixth. Ron Karkovice toward right. In the wind, in the night, Darren Jackson can't stay with it. The runners advance, and then Jack Morris, who did not have the control, lets that get loose. Mike Huff is in. Tim Raines and Bo Jackson see the Sox win again. They are red hot, six in a row. Joey Court, two hits, drove in three. Joe Carter did homer for the losing Jays. Jack Morris went five, gave up eight earned runs. Frank Thomas cooled tonight, going 0 for three. Looking to make it six zip and facing Paul Molitor. He has not been pitching that well. That is an example. I don't think it's playable. One nothing Jays into the second. Darnell Coles, who could be a valuable player for the Blue Jays after a year in Cincinnati, slashes it down the left field line. And John Olderud trots home. Three nothing Jays after three. Pat Henkin pitched well and did a hockey goalie routine. Shoulder save and a beauty. Didn't know where it was. Picks it up and backhand barehands it for the out. They had to bring in Danny Cox to finish up the game, but the Jays win it 6-2 for Jack Mack in his first loss. Twelve base runners, four earned in six and two-thirds. Toronto again saves what would have been its first series. First Juan Guzman on the Jays at Texas and hot hitting Jose Canseco back up the middle, but there is Roberto Alomar for the out. Charlie Liebrandt pitching well. John Olerud hitting well, but Dean Palmer, we know about his bat. You got to look at his glove. The Rangers stay within a run, then tied at two in the eighth. Gonzalez in scoring position. Dwayne Ward to Avon Rodriguez, who reaches out and pokes it, and here comes the lead run. It's 3 2 as the Rangers win it. Dwayne Ward, first blown save in nine appearances. The Jays also, we understand, considering putting Jack Morris on the DL. His back and shoulder problems continue as Texas cools Toronto. The Story all by John Olerud. Bases loaded, game tied at one, bottom of the six. When Olu does his Bill Buckner imitation on a David Hull smash, Palmer and Yvonne Rodriguez both score 3-1 Texas. Just three pitches later, Julio Franco tests, tests Olu, and John ends up kicking the ball into center field. All sorts of problems. Two more Texas runs score. Three errors on the night for John Olu, tying a club record. The guy came into the contest with just one error in 25 games. Texas got the great pitching from Kenny Rogers. Jose Canseco hits home run number three. Jose's batting 424 during his current eight-game hitting streak. In a jam, a man on Joe Carter goes deep for the 250th time in his career. As for McDonald, he would go on to give up four home runs in four innings. Toronto up 5-4. Scott Brown making his second major league start fared no better against Damon Buford. Buford making personal history his first major league home run. Tied up the game at five. A break in the slugfest for a knockdown. Alan Mills a bit wild against Luis Soho. Words exchanged. Benches cleared. No punches were thrown, though. Back to the game. Greg Olson off his game. Paul Molitor singling off him. Driving in Roberto Alomar. Blue Jays went on to the 10-8 victory. Pat Borders broke out of a 1-4-14 slump to go 3-4. for four. He hit one of Toronto's six homers. Matt At Sky Dome, great day for another rookie, Damon Buford. <laughs> Damon Buford, just 10 years old. At least I hope so, because I remember his dad playing for the Orioles. In the third, off Juan Guzman. Guzman is in Don. No, it doesn't work, but 
Another home run, second of the week since he came up. Jays rally, bottom of the fifth, 2-2 uh, two -two tie. Paul Molitor, the single. The score, Devon White. Now it's 3-2 Jays, and then top of the ninth. Dwayne Ward into pitch. Jack Voigt, not John Voigt, at second after a wild one, and then Harold Reynolds hits him where they ain't. It's a 3-3 tie. Voigt comes all the way home, and then after Reynolds steals second, it's Buford again. Hey, Buford, a single to drive in Reynolds. Orioles up 4-3. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Why are we showing you Darnell Coles popping out to Brady Anderson? Because this is the first time this year Cito Gaston has used a pinch hitter, and it might be the last. Greg Olson came in for his sixth save. Meanwhile, the Jays put Jack Morris on the DL, a right shoulder injury, only Morris's second trip to the disabled list. And top of the third, fans had their minds on the Maple Leafs as well as the Blue Jays. Travis Fryman ripping a liner. Stottlemyre delivered it. Sprague couldn't hang on. A couple of runs score. 4 nothing Detroit. In the eighth, it was 9-5. to five. Kyler singling the right off Eichhorn, his fourth hit of the game. And then two batters later, Travis Fryman doubling the left. Kyler scores his third run of the game. Trammell drove in three. Kirk Gibson, who leads the league in on-base percentage, scored three times. And the Tigers run it up on Toronto. Bill Gullick and making his first start following surgery worked into the sixth allowing five runs he did get the win Toronto has lost three straight and is at 500 a defensive struggle Cecil Fielder unloads number five on the year number two in the game six to two Tigers up next against the Jays Kirk Gibson he goes the opposite way Joe Carter goes back and makes a beautiful leap but he wasn't even close he is displeased by that is Joe so when he takes his ups in the bottom of the third facing Mike Moore golf shot Four, well, three-run homer in any event, 7-5 to five, Toronto. The Tigers come back, of course, 8-6 lead in the seventh. Here's the key play of the ballgame. Two on, Chad Kruder. Great catch by the ex-Tiger, Darnell Coles. One problem. When his glove hit the turf, out went the ball. Gibson scores. They'll get Rob Deere, who lacks quickness, coming home. But it's still 9-6 to six Detroit, and they prevail 13-8. Other bad news for Toronto. Shortstop Dickie Schofield broke his arm, run into by Milt Kyler, and to play at second base. Surgery on Thursday. Northern explosion, and Stewart gets Cecil Fielder. He was on a pitch count through 65 36 of those strikes. Top of the seventh, 4 2 Jays. Lou Whitaker and get out of here. Third home run of the year. This one off Danny Cox. Travis Fryman had homered earlier. It was a four all game. Top of the eighth. Mark Height Eichhorn facing Rob Deere, who hits one up. Out and gone a solo homer, his eighth of the season, and the Tigers take a 5-4 advantage. In the ninth, two on and two out. Bob McDonald facing Paul Molitor with runners on, and Molitor goes the other way. Rob Deere, no chance for this. A couple of runs come home, it's 6-5. Molitor had homered earlier in the game for Toronto. Joe Carter also hit one out as the Blue Jays rally to win it, 6-5. Molitor driving in four in the game. Dick Schofield, by the way, for the Jays, going on the disabled list, expected to be out for the year, as Dave Stewart not involved in the decision, pitching well for Toronto. In a 1-1 game, Roberto Alomar hits it up, and this is going to get just over the wall and right for a 2-1 Toronto lead. But Mike Stanley, who's now the regular catcher for the Yanks, facing Woody Williams. One of his three hits today, Mike Humphreys in for New York. Jays having problems. Gerald Williams, the swing hits Pat Borders in the back of the head. Remember the MVP for the World Series needed five stitches. Ouch. He did not return in the game, but the Jays say that he'll be okay for tomorrow's game. In the ninth, the Yanks leading 4-3. Steve Farr on for the save. Gets two outs, but also allows two hits and then throws the wild pitch. Tying run over to third. The winning run moves to second. Alfredo Griffin batting. A fly ball that Paul O'Neill gets under. It's an adventure, but Farr does nail down his eighth save, and the Yankees do win as Mike Stanley now batting 338 this season. Don Matt Witt pitching. Tell you what, the Blue Jays seem to always be together in Yankee Stadium. I mean, there's every series they go double digits once. That's Paul Molitor with a homer. And then next batter up, Joe Carter. Back, 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 back. Gone. His 12th, 2 nothing Toronto. For Mike Witt, it got worse. Stop of the second with a man on. Devo whips it good, sends it deep to center. Gerald Williams gives it a go, gives it a good go. Just over his glove. Devo's third homer makes it 6-1 to one, Toronto. Scott Kamenicki on in relief, no relief. John Olarud hits a home run. His fifth of the year, 9-1 Jays. Scorecard's getting a workout, and so is the glove of Todd Stottlemyre. Whoa, look, Ma, no hands. Makes the play on Deion James. But... Not all the Yankees went out quietly. Mac no-nokes. An upper deck shot. 
And then in the seventh inning, Notes again. Two off Stottlemyre today, seven in his career off Stottlemyre. Five ribbies today for Matty Notes. But back to the Jays. Why did they get Paul Molitor this season? Well, because he too would hit two homers in this game. 10 to 4 Toronto. But this is Paul Molitor. He's on second base. Wild pitch by Andy Cook. You watch the veteran. It's a blowout game, right? He rounds third. He's going to head for home and score from second base. Nice job, Molly. Nice job, Jays. They beat New York 12 to 6. Olerud in the series was 7 for 11 with four RBIs. And Stoudemire equals his mark. For but usually with an Oakland uniform, 14 and 6 lifetime against the Sox. This is set well out to left field. Up off the middle of the line. Here's two on Riles. Fastball ripped past Alomar. And the Red Sox are romping at Fenway. It's at hard pass Sprague, a single to left field. Oh, and it got through Griffin. That's going to cost him. Three runs. That's drilled to center field. Here comes run number eight. Allenton. Carter can't catch up with this. Another run scores. They're in double figures. That would be a montage of hits. Stu finally lifted, and speaking of lifting, how about the ERA? Watch it grow. Just add water. One and two-thirds innings, seven hits, ten earned runs. Ten earned runs, no home runs. 72 innings at Fenway without a dinger. We you might not have known. Actually, that's later in the show. But to the game, top of the second, Pat Borders with a double to right. John Olerud and Ed Sprague are in, and the Jays are leading two to nothing. Then on the bottom of the third, three to one. Mo Vaughn singles off the bag at second. Takes a wild hop, and Fletcher is in, so Boston back with it a run. Then they tie it at three in the sixth. Pat Borders up there again with a liner, and look at Yvonne Calderon come in and make the grab. So still tied. Bottom of the eighth, one on and nobody out. Ernest Riles grounds to Alomar at second, who flips it to Alfredo Griffin for one, but the umpire rules that Hatcher interfered and calls Riles out too. And then in the ninth, Joe Carter off the glove of the pitcher, Paul Quantrill. They get the force, but Devon White scores the winning run, and the Jays tie Boston for third place in the East. Paul Molitor had three hits. Toronto has now gone 29 straight games with at least one extra base hit. Lee. Bases are jammed, and Danny Cox on in relief, and EK's Kirby. Blue Jays win it 7-zip. Twins have given up an average of eight runs in this six-game losing streak. Todd Stottlemyre left the game with a strained tricep. He'll be examined on Sunday. The ailing Twins in Toronto, and Pat Henkin, guy who is iffy, making the rotation, maybe There's making the captain. team in spring training, mound, allowing just one run and five hits first. working into the eighth inning. Bottom of the third, weird play. Alomar with a right bouncer off the bag. The one run Perfect comes home. Devon seven. White tries to score, to but he is not safe. One nothing Jays. Bottom of the fifth, 1-1. One, one. Alfredo the Griffin, the shot Kirby. toward right. Kirby going back, going back in the going park, but enough to get Darnell Coles home with a 2-1. to Toronto Lee, the Blue Jay mascot who was tossed out of the game on Saturday for holding his nose in disapproval of the umpire, stayed in the game today. The Twins off to their worst start against the AL East since eight. First pitch to Devon is gone. This is the 18th time White has led off the game with a home run. His fifth of the year, Jays led one zip. As for Dave Stewart, made up for that rocky first start as a Toronto Blue Jay. Impressive in his second start. Striking out Greg Vaughn with a fastball, and then Stewart gives Robin Yount the breaking ball blues. A two-hit seven-inning performance for Stu. As for Devon White, who's hitting over 300, another home run. A two-run shot this time. The fourth time White has hit two home runs in a game. The Jays end up winning at 4-1. Their ninth win in their last 11 games. Stewart credited his turnaround, at least in this start, to a correction of mechanics. The Blue Jays hosting the Brewers at Skydome. Bottom of the first with Alomar at second. Paul Molitor at first. Joe Carter batting. And that'll score, too. He drives in runs. That's his job. That's what he does. 39 runs batted in for Carter this season. Juan Guzman pitching for the Blue Jays and gets Kevin Reimer. Reimer maybe not so hot at the plate, but pretty good in the outfield, at least in this game. Nice catch, and he does hang on. Jays trying to add to their lead. In the eighth with a runner at third, Joe Carter again. 
All Molitor scores. Carter drives in three in the game, so that's 40 runs batted in for the season, and the Jays win at 4-2. Guzman with his first win in nearly a month. Dwayne Ward, who blew three saves during Guzman's no-decision streak, saved this one. The Brewer Cito Gaston hoping Morris can improve on his 17-20 and 20, 17 and 20 mark against Milwaukee. So much for improvement. Top of the fourth, no outs, runners on the corners. B.J. Surhoff, one of his three hits, good enough to score Robin Yount. It put the Brewers up in front 3-1. Same inning. Morris to Greg Vaughn. And Vaughn goes deep for the 11th time this year. The Brewers scored six runs in that fourth inning, the third time a team has batted around against Morris this season. There is your 8-1 final. Yount, Surhoff, three hits apiece. Lampkin with three RBIs. Jack Morris now 17-21 and 21 lifetime against Milwaukee. At the present time, Morris has an ERA over 10. Eight to Oakland and a standing over for Stu, who then went on to K leadoff man. Ricky Henderson. Later in the game, the fourth. The A's put some on the board. Ruben Sierra to left. Joe Carter respecting his power was playing deep and he can't get there. Henderson will come in to score. Terry Steinbach then lined one to right. And up comes Kevin Seitzer. Seitzer chopped one to right. Henderson comes across to score the third run. Stu needs some offensive help and he gets it. John Olerud off Bob Welch and Olerud goes down the line. Ruben Alomar scores. It's three all. Eighth inning. Devon White was on second, and Alomar gets one by. Devon comes in to score, and the Jays win it 5-3. to three. Dwayne Ward pitches a perfect ninth for his 14th save. White, Molitor, and Darren Jackson all with two hits apiece for the Jays. Coliseum, it's Storm Davis. Bases loaded, A's 2-1. The rookie, Domingo Cedeno, with a blooper over second. Two runs score. Cedeno on his way to four RBIs. It's 3-2 Jays in the second. Tony Larusa going... No, uh, Storm Davis is gone already. I'm going to bring in Dave Stewart. Oh, he's on the other team. Bottom of the second, runners first and second. Jays 5-3, Ruben Sierra. That one's not playable either. And Juan Guzman, tip your hat to the crowd. No, that's not what he's doing there. 6-5 to five A's in the second. Top of the third, John Olderud against Storm Davis. Gave up five runs. He's still in there. And it's out of here again. This looks like a Rockies game. It's 6-6. Bottom of the third, A's have taken an 8-6 to six lead. Lance Blankenship against Mark Eichhorn. It's a bad sign for the Blue Jays when Eichhorn is in in the third inning. Got a little tangled up in blue at third base. Bordick and Sprague get tied up. Bordick goes home. Cito Gaston says, can I go home? Top of the sixth, Ed Sprague off Goose Gossage. You knew that was going to happen. We're tied at 11. Top of the eighth, runners on first and second for the Jays. Pat Borders against Gustav Moeller, Mike Moeller. Two run score as Borders brings in the 12th run, and here comes the 13th run, and that's all she wrote. Another conservative pitching game. How could you have a save in a 13 to 11 game? The Jays were up 5-2, down 6-5, tied at 6, down 10-6, down 11-9, tied at 11. And who pitched worse? Guzman, nine earned in two and a third. Davis, seven earned in three and two thirds.